Hey, what's up everybody? It's the liberal loudmouth. So today's video is all about irony, the irony of the Catholic Church, the irony of religion, and the irony and audacity of a person named Samantha Brassis. Now, I did a video yesterday talking about a court case from John Doe against the Archdiocese of Oklahoma, as well as Samantha Brassis. In order to just drive home the irony of what's happening, let's look at this court case, shall we? Please keep note of the dates. Okay, so on June 18th, you can see that Samantha Brassis entered a plea of guilty. The court accepted that plea, and right here is the date, June 18th, 2021. She's sentenced to 10 years in their custody, and eight of those were suspended. So what does that have to do with the irony? Well, let's look. As you can see here, Samantha Brassis authored a book titled Personal Boundary Protection Plan, a Tool for Oklahoma Schools and Staff. Wow, okay, well let's figure out, what is this book about? Over time, there has been a growing problem with inappropriate interactions between teachers and students. As we see these stories in the news and newspapers, we lose sight that they are more than just stories. These are lives, families, and children. Each day, students go to school and are led to believe this is a safe environment for them to learn. This is not and never should be an environment for boundaries to be crossed and trauma to be caused. This training is to act as a safety net for teachers and school administrations. Notice it says safety net for teachers and school administrations, not to protect children. Anyway, right here, publication date, June 14th, 2021. That's interesting. That is four days before this woman pleads guilty to having an inappropriate relationship with a child. And who published this book? Let's take a look. Now, as you can see here, this book appears to have been self-published, right? You don't see a publisher on this. But I want to show you something real quick. A new version of this book through paperback. Now look at the cover of this book. If you notice, this is a person who on one side has an orange jumpsuit signifying a prisoner or criminal, and on the other side, a teacher. So this person is capitalizing on the fact that they were imprisoned for some reason. Now this one was published February 17th, 2022. Who published this book, I wonder? Well, would you looky there. Christian Faith Publishing, February 17th, 2022. And now let's go and look at the comment section. Now, would you look at who else wrote a review over this book? The Catholic Church of Oklahoma also reviewed this book, and they said, this publication is an asset to all school systems in Oklahoma and throughout the United States. There is nothing else like this publication out there, and it is an asset for a public school, private school, as well as religious education systems, not only in the state of Oklahoma, but throughout school systems in the United States. This year, 2021, Oklahoma is in need of 2,800 emergency certified teachers. Clearly, this type of publication is needed. Now, it appears to me that the original book she self-published Four days prior to her pleading guilty, I'm sure she was trying to generate revenue for herself, maybe for her family. Who knows why she did that? But then, less than a year later, the Christian Faith Publishing Company took her book, they published it in paperback, and used the fact that she was a criminal who wrote this book about how to not have inappropriate relationships with students. Now, I want to be clear. I bought this book, the Kindle version, for $5. I didn't want to, but to do my due diligence, I needed to do it so that I could see what actually was in the book. And let me tell you, it is an absolutely worthless piece of trash. It is disjointed. There are spelling errors all over the place. I don't know what this person was thinking. I don't know if the paperback is any better. I don't know that the Christian faith publishing company actually put any effort into it or if they just slapped those pages together uh, and, and called it a day. That may actually be what they did, but they are using her criminality as a way to capitalize on this stuff 
And then the Catholic Church of Oklahoma, which is run by the Archdiocese, gave high praise to this book. Y'all, this is nasty. So what I'm hoping is happening here, because we know that the attorney is about to drop an even bigger filing within that lawsuit that I talked about yesterday. What I hope they do is that they rake this publisher over the coals for what they're doing to provide restitution for the victim, which was this 14-year-old boy who is now 18 and has filed a suit as John Doe. I hope that they take every bit of money that, that, that has ever been generated from that book and put it in the pockets of the student who was preyed upon by their teacher. It's disgusting. It's ironic. Samantha Brasses should be ashamed of herself. And I hope that the attorney for John Doe sticks it to them as hard as humanly possible because that's what needs to happen in this instance. Please let me know what you think in the comment section below, and we will catch you all next time. Peace.